That's good. <clears throat> Hi there, friends. I'm Scott Wakefield, lead pastor at First Christian Church of Greene County, Tennessee. And I am here today with Daniel Matheny. And we are going to have a coffee, coffee convo. convo. Coffee Convos is a chance to sit down with friends like Daniel and hear the story of God's work in their lives and see what's going on and uh, help the throngs of dozens of FCCers out there who will watch this get to know who you are. Yep. So uh, we call you, called you just now a friend. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I made it to the, I made it to the group finally. Yes, finally. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's a very hard, long road. <laughs> Long and winding road. Da, da. Um, so, we, we don't we don't sing on coffee convo. There's no it, singing. Well, you will you will get the down low one. I sing like drop of the hat. <laughs> That's fine. Actually, you can go ahead. <laughs> uh, only when the mood hits me. <laughs> We're going to start with the solo. Me. Solo, you can't hear it. Ha <laughs> ha. Speaking of solo, you can't hear it as a pun. You're the punster. It, uh, Yes, a lot of people refer to me. As this is that. a good public opportunity for you to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Daniel, tell us about who you are, how you got to today, all that good stuff. In the beginning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. I grew up and was raised in Florida. Um, yep. I am actually adopted. Um, I was raised in a, a very abusive home for seven years of my life. I was raised by my aunt for the next forever 20 or so years um she's still in my life today i got adopted when i was 18 um and then uh i took care of my grandmother for about nine or ten years mm -hmm. uh then and most uh, of that is here yes, yes yes i moved here in 2000 okay. so i've been here 22 years yes uh a lot longer than i have in florida now yeah. so second home here officially <laughs> no, this is your f this is your home, home. yeah yeah this one okay All right. yeah this is, this is home uh <clears throat> Anyway, uh, so then uh, in 2015, well, 2014, I met my wife, and uh, we got married, and uh, f a year later, we had my son, and now we have a five-year-old. So, yes, you do. Yep. <laughs> what has been the most surprising, different than expectations thing about being a dad? Uh... I always thought it'd be like I'm a kid at heart. Yeah. I always thought it'd be really super easy for me to get into their world and kind of play and get on their level. Yeah, and yeah. I, I love doing that stuff. Sure, sure. And I had no idea that w once I'm in his world, he doesn't want me in that world. He <laughs> wants me to organize his world according to what he wants. Oh, so it's his. <laughs> yeah, world. It's, it's his yeah, world. Exactly. That's for sure. Yes. It's like he'll he'll ask me to play. Uh, like he loves a hundred percent about trains. Uh -huh. uh, we have Lego sets. We have Brio. We have nice. all all the other stuff. And yeah. so he's like, let's play Lego choo choos. And so he'll he'll tell me specifically what train he wants me to play with. And if I decide to change it up with anything else, no, you need to play with that train. <laughs> You can play with me, but <laughs> Just I am my in charge rules. of your play <laughs> yeah. with me. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. And uh, cool. I was like, man, I was like, I don't remember that as a kid, but maybe I was like that. I don't know. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> no, of course, I'm sure you weren't. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we have we have lots of questions yep. that were submitted uh, that you don't know that I'm asking, um, but we have questions that you know that we're asking. Um, so we'll get to some of those a little bit later here, but let's do let's do some stuff that's been sent in. Okay. Um, like, tell us one of your favorite dad jokes. And of course, I did specify one. Just, just you're <laughs> I welcome, keep all everybody. my dad jokes you're in welcome. a data bank. Ah. Ah. <laughs> a database, a data bank. That's good. That's good. That's your joke. Yep, that's my oh, joke. Okay. Oh, I'm that was it. To it. Yep. Oh, I sorry. I, I thought thought there was more coming. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I have been brewing over a few others. Oh. No, <laughs> don't. don't. I, I was I was thinking. I was like, maybe I could get Scott Scott to take away my mug. That way, I could say I've been mugged. Uh, you're you're we're cutting you off. <laughs> Speaking of mug, what is your mug? Tell us about your mug. 
Uh, this is a show to have to do with Dungeons and Dragons. I know, <gasps> shock and awe, somebody's talking about that at a church function. Um, but Dungeons uh, and Dragons, for those who don't know, is a role-playing game. It's a role-playing game, all about fantasy, uh, themed after more like Lord of the Rings, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Um, a lot of that, the uh, dragons, of course, in the name, dungeons, so forth. Adve you go on adventures, you save damsels in distress. You know, you could do, Dungeons and Dragons is really infinite. It doesn't have to be all about that deep, dark stuff. In fact, uh, the worlds I build all revolve around one god, hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to... So there's a monotheistic D&D &D world. Yeah, absolutely. Because you say so. Yeah, exactly. So you are actually the uh, the sovereign in this world, as it turns yeah, out. Yeah, pretty much. So so uh, <coughs> it's deceiving you into thinking that you're in charge of the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I... I, I I do go above reproach. I'm like, hey, guys, if, if there's anything wrong, please let me know. But I, I, I do not. Uh, there's some dungeon masters who will refer to themselves as God, well, and yeah, I do not do that. I was about to say, uh, it sounds like I was being silly, but you pick up, of course, what I'm saying. A dungeon master is in charge of everything uh, of being the npcs of uh, running stores of you know things that you need to sell and buy i need to know how much they cost i need to know how much you know they're hiking prices because they don't like you in their store you okay. know uh, i need to be in charge of you know oh you want to go take down this town next door uh well uh they have spies and they know about you and okay. you know just there is a myriad of just different things and like say you choose to you know, I don't know, kick somebody in the shin, you know, uh, three episodes from there, you know, they could have hired a militia to take you out. <laughs> I, we need to stop this. this <laughs> just like the data bank, dad, dad jokes thing, we have to, otherwise I'm going to take us down a long winding road. Uh, it is interesting, though, that it is its own sort of, it's like anything. It's its own universe. Yes. Um, you can get into it in a whole bunch of ways. And it can be anything. Like uh, I was reading um, a lot of uh, therapists use Dungeons & Dragons to help people oh. out with their issues. Like you want a super stressful situation, you put them, it's like, you know, working through it in a, in a mental capacity. And you do become involved in RPGs, role-playing games like that. In a way, sometimes that is all-encompassing. Yeah. You yeah. can, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk about how you're in therapy for that later. <laughs> uh, questions like, uh, what's your favorite thing about roasting catalyst beans? Uh, I'm guessing Nathan probably sent that I'm one I'm guessing that Nathan <laughs> probably did. <laughs> uh, I really like serving people, and I love, I love cooking. Um, and uh, it's just, once I learned how to do it, it's really super simple. I love the smell of roasting coffee. It is cool. Uh, okay. I it really like good. it, and it, and uh, the new roaster. I'm. Uh, it's like a. It's a dream. It, it, it's yes, it is. <laughs> and it roasts coffee so quickly. Like the last one, you like adjust. You, you know, you could be waiting on a roast the last one thirty to forty five minutes, but this one, it's like on time every time. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I am uh, enjoying perhaps. In beans fact, you uh, have this right this now. this burn right here is from roasting coffee the other day. Yeah, I don't have ligaments <laughs> in uh, this side of my finger because of a uh, roaster. Yes, we have our war wounds. <clears throat> Um, a lot of folks, though, may not know that there are a number of folks from First Christian who uh, volunteer to do a lot of roasting for yes. church and Catalyst, Catalyst and, yeah. and keep that up. I mainly do roasting for Catalyst. I've never been asked to do for church, but I, do, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a see a need, fill a need person. Absolutely. So uh, you were in Leadership Life Group earlier this year, apparently. Yes. Yes, I was. Uh, How was that? Chris Hoax. It was really great. What <clears throat> is Leadership Life Group? Tell the people who may not know. <clears throat> oh, Lord, I'm going to get this so wrong. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's a – because well, uh, uh, the very first two weeks, me and my wife were at work for COVID okay. of Leadership Life Group. Yeah. Um, I know it lasts a number of weeks. Uh, Chris Oaks, please forgive me. Um, I don't know what the number of that weeks is. But we get together. We go for a uh, book for life. Uh, groups and uh, we learn about how to just facilitate how uh -huh. to grow the people in groups how to be intentional uh -huh. um, <clears throat> uh, different things about that uh, and just kind of you know almost like live out a life group because yes. you get together with four or five different other people or families and you're doing and you're doing the life group uh, like while you're going over the book work you're pretty much doing the life group as it right. is because we eat first uh -huh. and then we talk about you know just 
how God works and uh, the stuff in the book. Yeah. So. What are some things that you uh, were helped by in that, and what did you learn in some of that? Um, the main thing I really learned uh, from those books is um, r- really uh, <laughs> it can be a lot of work. You know, when you're looking into being a, a disciple maker through others, you're really looking uh, for those things, how they need to be serviced. Hmm. And uh, and that kind of opened my eyes like, oh, hey, I need to keep an eye out for this. You know, that's, you know, because I have a heart for wanting to serve other people, wanting to, yeah. you know, make sure that they, they know God in the in the way that gets them closer to him in yeah. the best way possible. So, uh, <clears throat> so are you talking about adjusting, like, for example, we've got this, let's just say, uh, for the sermon guide, we've got questions based on a certain sermon for that week that we're all talking about or a topic for that week yeah. in leadership life group thinking about that particular question in a way that helps the other person yeah. grow or how to reword that uh, right. question right, right. Uh, that uh, guides them in a way that says I've never looked at that that way before right right um, cool yeah that's a that's a key piece of disciple making um, I was just thinking about second Timothy 2 2 earlier today which says that you need to be trained to train others just as the others trained you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be trained by someone who trained you to train others to train others also. And so (laughs) it's, it's, it's a making disciples who make disciples process. Yeah. And and that's a different animal than just read this as it applies to me. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, What, what do you think um, is the greatest challenge, perhaps, for leading a life group like that or something like that that you, that you experienced in that leadership life group that you might not have been as aware of before? Uh-huh. The only thing I could really say would probably be a challenge is when life gets busy, and it will get busy. And uh, just missing those key opportunities where I'm busy, but that person or these people in that particular life group probably needs somebody to reach out to them. Mm. And I'm not doing my job because it's, you know, super busy or I just happen to be not intentional at that point in time, you know. Yeah, it takes work yeah, to, it take, yeah. to make sure that you as leader of a group... Yeah. Uh, like like before regeneration and stuff, I would have never figured myself absolutely not for a leader. No, uh, absolutely not. And put me in the last line, you know, the 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 the, the follower at the end, whatever you want. Well, let's keep going on this for a second. Um, nobody out there knows. I know, and you know, but uh, you have out of nowhere randomly sent me praying for you texts for a long time. Yeah. Um, and that takes initiative. Um, and that's been a helpful, encouraging, cool thing for me. Um, you sent me one yesterday um, that I, hey, I'm sorry I didn't respond to your text. Thanks for your text about Father's uh, Day the, and the all one, that. Uh, so <laughs> when I went through Regen, I used to be this guy in church for years and years and years. Like, why doesn't anybody talk to me? And why uh, doesn't anybody reach out to me? And, right, re- right. and uh, it was in Regen that I figured, man, that is so selfish. Like and well, and, I, and and like you said, everybody has stuff in their lives that they can't manage, and so everybody's busy enough that yeah. there's more than they can handle. Even yeah, yeah. Not so uh, so show, in yeah, Regen, yeah. I was right. like, uh, God hit me with this idea. Like, why don't you be for others, what I want, yes. for myself. Yes. And uh, so I just I started like I I reach out to a bunch of people like people I don't even go to Regen with anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like every it's not a whole lot, but like you know oh, once no. every few months I'll no, be like, great. hey, I'm praying for you, and I'm thinking it's about huge. you. It's huge. And uh, you know sometimes I get a text back, but I am definitely a whole hundred percent not hurt if you don't respond to me because <laughs> uh, life goes on, and right. I'm not my identity is secure in Christ, not whether or not you respond to me. Right, right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. No, that's uh, that's great. Uh, it's just, uh, I really, uh, really at all do not feel bad if somebody does not respond. I know people like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, dude, I know life is going on. It's hectic. Yeah. My my goal in texting you is not to get a response. My goal is to encourage you and say, right. you know, somebody's there praying if for you. If you read that, 
Yeah. We're yeah. getting where yeah. we meant to get. Yeah. And that's, uh, God really put that on my heart. I'm not on top of it as much as I used to be, but, you know, here or there. Well, no, it's great. I, I, and it's a ministry of showing people um, you care, they're cared for, someone's praying. Yeah. Um, it's a ministry of encouraging someone. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not something a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. I think it's super cool. Yeah. You didn't know we were going to talk about that, and I didn't either until we just got there. But that's, uh, <laughs> but that's a cool, hey, Daniel Matheny does this thing. Yeah. Um, that any, anybody can do that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a simple text. Hey, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about your family. I'm thinking about your right, kids. Right. Yes. Um, you know, if you need anything else for me to pray for specifically, please let me know. And, and what's cool about that is it communicates to others this whole body of believers is we're here for each other we're working is is in that game for for one another yes for one another so um you guys are planning on going to the south green yes that is correct um why why south green what are you thinking about are you excited about (laughs) well it's my alma mater I graduated from South Green. Okay. Uh, plus, I live right down the road. It's you like do. walking distance. Yes. <laughs> I could walk to church every, and that was like a really positive thing. I was like, hey, I could walk, get some good exercise. I could help them set up in the morning, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, I get to go to the place I graduated with and go through like a bunch of regeneration issues. I didn't know I had until I showed up. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, there's a lot of resentments and stuff I've worked through through the years uh, from high school. And who doesn't have those? Um, but uh, anyway, so it's going I, to be a healing moment. Yeah, it will uh, because uh, I I like singing, but people used to make fun of my singing in high school, hmm. and uh, so I I never really I I would only do it in outburst. In I have ADD, so I would outburst. You know, singing like I did here, yeah, yeah. and uh, people like so so I like I I shut in I shut in everything, and like only my closest friends would get the noid annoyed with me <laughs> with my random singing but nobody else would would really hear that stuff and uh so i told chris carlson you know i'd i'd possibly help out with singing ever so often but i'm also in like every ministry <laughs> pocket known to man <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I need Narrow to get that on a, like a every every other week schedule or something yeah. <laughs> um why do you think Worship and serve commitment um, and getting involved in serving somewhere is so helpful and important. And how has it been for you? Uh, before regeneration, yeah. um, I would have never served. And we'll definitely get to regen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, this is just re- uh, this whole hour is regen <laughs> Um uh, But uh, I thought my sin struggle was keep, I could not serve because of what. I was dealing with right, right. and all the all the stuff and there was no way that I could help God out or do God's work. Is that because of the ongoing like shame, shame and guilt yeah, and right. yeah. It's all Did, that. That 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 sort of in your own mind yeah automatically disqualified you. Yeah. And so after uh Regen, I honestly went it through it the first time. Uh I was firm in my belief of I'm secure in Christ mm-hmm. and I can um and I was like man, I can really serve. And I, that serving has actually opened my heart and my mind to be others oriented, not only focused on myself. That's great. Um, I love, it, it has opened my heart. It, when I serve, it's taking my, the mind off of what I need mm. and puts the m- mind on what others need and mm-hmm. how God can serve them. And, uh, and, and it, and it doesn't have to be this huge... It, yeah, it's not a big deal. Like, you can just show up and be like, hey, can you watch the door and give out, you know, tickets? And, right. like, for the first three Sundays, all I did was, hey, welcome to FCC. Yeah, right. That, that's all I did. Right. And because I was also recovering, from, uh, recovering, you know, what I thought to be was uh, introvert. But, you know, I learned I was other things. <laughs> uh, so it, it's been a slow recovery process of, like, nice. hey, I don't have to be afraid anymore of people. Right. You know. But, but, but even... Like in those first three weeks, for example, for you, even doing something where it's, you know, it, it's not going to be some huge, crazy commitment where you're leading somebody through years of counseling. Yeah. Um, it can be, it can be relatively 
easy to do. It doesn't have to be a huge commitment. No. And, it, and even just doing that is a mind shift of those who are coming in. How can I help serve them? I wonder what those needs are. I bet people are coming here with the same kinds of things that I'm dealing with. And so you're, you're going through the process and you're thinking, I'm praying for these people in the moments that I'm perhaps handing something out or helping them with something or yeah. sweeping or cleaning or whatever. Um, it is a mind shift in a bunch of really cool ways that I think are, are important like that. Um, yeah, that's great. Anything more you want to say about um, serving? Uh, but a worship and serve is uh, uh, most important. In fact, I could probably, uh, uh, Bob's going to probably hit me, but I don't know what order it goes <coughs> In you the can next serve and worship, you can worship and serve. serve yeah, um, <clears throat> but uh, it, it's I would say one of the more important steps because it keeps us others oriented for Christ mm. and really keeps our focus uh, off of ourselves. I you know one of the key thing, things that I'm continuing to learn in Regen is how much I am myself oriented and yeah. how much that has got me where I'm at today. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk Regen. Um, Tell us about your experience in Regen. We'll go from there. Uh, it has been a roller coaster ride. <laughs> uh, first time I went through Regen, I stopped doing work about inventory. <laughs> that uh, is the first place. A lot you of get people to step go, four. and it is okay if you are there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, c- and that is a lot of stuff. I thought I could just keep my inventory in my head. I didn't have to write it down. Yeah, that's that because once you get into the other subsequent steps, it's impossible to, you, to, to do those to things do those right. things if you don't have them written down that's right and so the next time i wrote them down now i have all my inventory stuff on an excel spreadsheet so it goes on look at you are you serious yeah 100 percent. that's the best uh what is inventory for those who may not know uh it we make a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves yes we do step four yes um uh, and I do not have the Bible verse for that. <laughs> so it's admit, believe, trust, and then inventory. Then inventory. And uh, let me tell you that once you jump into inventory, steps one through three does not prepare you for four. No. Well, there's a sense well, in which nothing can. Can, yeah. But uh, it, is, it is very different than the first three. Yeah. Uh, it, the only thing it does prepare you for, it prepares your heart and your trust on right. God. Yes. And that's the most important thing. Yes. Um, I actually, uh, it may sound crazy and a lot of people think I'm crazy, but four is my favorite step because it shows, it doesn't show how I lack, it shows how God is abundant. That's good. Um, so why do you say, tell us some specifics about what's in inventory and the kinds of things you're, you're working through. Because I think that is a, there are a number of folks who think, oh, I know, I know what Regen's like. I, I know 12 steps. Uh, and there are some people who have been through <coughs> recovery programs or 12-step programs who understand what inventory is. Yeah. But even the Regen inventory is a smidge different than other inventories people Well, there are six different ones. Yes. Resentments, fears, harms to me, mm-hmm. harms to others. Right. Sexual inventory and recovery issues. Yes. Um, and, and it's, uh, I think, basically in that order. Uh, and, and it does encourage you to do them in that order because yes. there's a reason for that order. Right. So um, resentments is first. Yes. Because that's sort of easy for people to think yeah, of. Yeah, of uh, who do I hate, what do I hate. And <laughs> uh, just, to, just for the record, that language is not in the book itself. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I look at it. That, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, or even what have I been frustrated by? Sure. You know. It's all manner yeah. of things like that. Yeah. Um, and, and the resentments are easy to think of yeah. because you hold on to those. Um, they're, they're fresh in people's yeah. minds and hearts. Um, it's, it's not particularly uh, about our inner world yet yeah. that much. Um, and it's easy to think about that kind of stuff. But it's a good place to start. Yeah. Uh, sort, sort of get you going for the harms to me by me yeah etc yeah uh but the the longest uh resentment i had written down for was myself how much i had Hmm. hated myself for the the choices i had made the you know or the choices i had not made Mm -hmm. you know the laziness throughout the years Mm -hmm. you know just uh the sin in my life Mm -hmm. um uh different things like that um but that was i mean i had like two pages worth of so uh a lot of people have this question about region, and uh, especially the inventory kinds of things. Yeah. Um, 
because there's a, a people who haven't even been through it have a sense that oh, oh I, know I need gonna, some big issue or well that's <laughs> true too but I, they, they know they're going to have to get deep into things yeah. and they're like oh, I just don't want to live that again I'm over that already mm-hmm. um, can you speak to that a little bit when people say well I, I what's the benefit of me like literally writing down the things and what's behind it and what the patterns are because you've never the reason you don't want to go through those things is because you haven't recovered from them yet and that's how god's really going to work on you them. mean you mean the reason i don't want to go through that is because i'm actually threatened huh yes hmm. uh and also um uh there's uh there's a bible verse i cannot remember uh but it pretty much uh i think it's in psalms and um Oh gosh, I can't remember what it is. Uh, it's like um, about the benefits one of three. Yeah. Uh, um, no, it, it's like it's when David is talking to God and he's like, um, I can't remember. Uh, it's it's up there, but it's not. Anyway, uh, let's move on. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so. Uh, why is it helpful to go through the process of writing those things down, reprocessing them, etc.? Because each time you write it down, you're giving those over to God instead of dealing with in it with your own ways mm. and responding in your sinful ways and saying, mm. "Hey, God, I trust you with this." Like writing it down for me was uh-huh. saying, "I I trust this to m- m- the way I did this." is wrong because it's brought me to where I'm at. Hmm. And uh, for you to, I mean, I even wrote down small stuff. Like in my fears, I have a fear of spiders. Like I wrote that down. Like when I was six, like I had a fear of werewolves. Those aren't real, but I wrote that down, (laughs) you know. A fear is a fear. Yeah, yeah. And there's things that are are idols behind that. And that helps me realize, gosh, that's how I'm coping in today's world. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, uh, you know, instead of me being God-oriented, I'm more, you know, self-oriented in these ways. Mm-hmm. Um, there is, when I do my inventory, there is no sacred place. There is, I need to go every place. That's how I get to where God needs me to be. Mm-hmm. The more uncomfortable I am, the more God is doing the work. The more he is getting in those places that I have not wanted him to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's an important piece of getting to health that I think a lot of people often avoid. Yeah. Um, well, they're fearful. Yeah. Of that. Well, and, and a lot of people, um, I've known uh, several people who uh, like, oh, I've, you know, I'm, I'm living a real godly life. There's no reason for me to live this thing that I have. Re- I mean, they have honestly done the work. Um, but it is also helpful to go through that stuff again and say, hey, ha- have I truly, you know, gone through this stuff? Have yeah. I ha- just revisit it? So it. If God has recovered it from you, there should be no issue of you going it through again. I've been through two and a half times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Myself. I mean, so uh, yeah. uh, to me, there there should be no issue. If, if somebody said, you know, you need to, you know, go through this for this issue again, I'm like, sure. Yeah. Bring it. Sign, yeah. Sign me up. Um, what are some other things you've learned in Regen? About yourself, about others, whatever. Um, the difference between, uh, the thing I'm learning right now is the difference between patience and passivity. What do you mean? Um, a lot of times when things make uh, can make me frustrated, mm-hmm. which I'm very slow to anger usually. I'm not a very angry person. Um, but uh, I have struggled with anger. And what I mean by that is the first seven years of my life, I had a very angry father figure and I was so afraid of being angry because I was afraid of being abusive and things like that yeah um so saw where it got yeah I saw where it got and I was so afraid to get myself there and so I avoided it so um when frustrating things or or things that are negative are happening in my life I'll just keep I noticed this here recently that I'll I'll just keep repeating to myself like no I'm a patient person no I'm a patient person instead of like really going through the and living in those feelings Uh and experiencing those and uh uh, actually honoring God through those feelings because God has given me those feelings for a reason. Mm. Um, so uh, that's been, and look out for instances where instead of like, say there's something frustrating happening, uh-huh. um, instead of me just sweeping underneath the rug, how do I, how do I deal with this sort of thing? Instead right, of being right. passive, 
I can actually be patient in me dealing with the situation through my, through my uh, patience in it. In it, in, yeah. Instead of avoidance. Instead of avoidance. So were you using "I'm patient, I'm patient" as an excuse that was actually passivity before? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. What made you What made you realize that and think that? Uh, um, I mean, you don't have to tell us all this. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, to, the, the, <laughs> uh, so uh, when he was going through Regen, Tyson Hodge was my um, was my leader. Yes. Our leader for a while, and I was his apprentice. And uh, it got to the point in his, his inventory, Tyson. I hopefully I have. Uh, your approval to share this, but he said uh, he uh, put anger over everything, oh, uh, like okay. his yes. his cover over emotion. Okay. And yes. uh, I was just kind of working one day, and when I'm when I'm working, I work on a machine at work, and I have nothing else to think about. So I usually think about you know God and Regen and, and you know and uh, you know or have a song in my heart, things like that, or how you know I need to work on things. But uh, it just popped in my head because uh, I was going through a pretty fresh like we had just. Came home, and uh, there was a strange smell in the house, and I'd smelled all the way around, couldn't find where it was coming from, and then some, we had this deep freezer. Well, the deep freezer had like not been on for like three or four days. Nice. And uh, yeah, uh, bad chicken, and uh, like you'll, uh, it, it, nasty, just nasty. Uh, so I was frustrated, <laughs> frustrated over that, and I was just dealing with uh, some just anger. Well, you probably it. lost a lot of. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost, uh, we had quite a few stakes in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just here and there. Not as much, uh, not as much as we've had before, but uh, we did lose some. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I was frustrated and trying to deal with that, yeah. and uh, I just was thinking about that situation at work and how I could have handled it better. And I was like, you know what? I think I handled it just fine. I didn't, you know, uh, you know, lash out in anger at my wife or my kid or anything right. like that. Yeah. You know, and uh, even though I was frustrated, I didn't, you know, like yell or stomp off or anything like that. Um, but uh, I was like, instead of me saying that there was a problem, you know, look at it honestly and say, hey, how, you know, how can I do this? You know, say, hey, yeah, I am frustrated. When my, uh, normally when I'm frustrated and somebody, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. No, no, that's not how I need to answer. I need to answer. Yes, I'm frustrated. And these, it may not be, the more you speak it out, the more you can, that other person can help you realize you may not be in the right headspace. Um, and that's what I've realized a lot. The more I can share my stuff, the the less I can uh, be immersed in my own, like, broken headspace. Uh, and you're receiving more feedback from yes. the people. Yeah. And the community and godly of faith feedback. Can, yes. can be saying things that you're hearing as feedback. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Um, <clears throat> It, yeah, as you were talking, I was thinking it's one thing to avoid something that we think is a negative mm-hmm. response or emotion. Duh, that's fine. That's good. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes avoiding something like that can be a reason why we don't also do something that should happen. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that when you were talking about the passivity well, and it, patience. Uh, well, thing. um you know, one of the Bible verses, you know, it says, be anger, be angry and do, and not, do sin. not sin. Yeah. So the Bible's telling you, to, it's okay to be angry. Right. And for such a long time, I had such an issue with that. And uh, it's just, you know, because I only knew anger as, as one negative thing for me. Um, so it's been really healing to see anger in it, you know, in a different way, because God is angry for us when, you know, we are wronged, you know, and, and you know, things like that. So it is... Learning that right relationship with anger has been good for me. Why do you think you were angry uh, before and that was a prevailing thing for you? What do you mean? What were you angry about? Like with the freezer? In life, before the freezer. Uh, Selfish things. Um, You know, I wasn't wasn't really an angry kid. Um, It was just, uh, I was just, anytime, you know, a kid stole something from me or, or you know I, I one ki- one time a kid uh there's been several times during lunchtime uh one kid uh i brought in an electric train set a uh, kid cut the cords <laughs> you know i was upset at that uh, i used to draw uh anime back in the day and mm-hmm. i brought those to school show everybody this person ripped them right in half you know my whole book yeah um so uh so those things you know obviously uh made yeah. me angry sure and uh you know or you know, just 
hormones and stuff like that. You know, things that are um, just selfish. I'll, uh, some of it is selfish based that have brought me anger. But, you know, also, you know, when people, um, you know, uh, not caring for kids or, you know, I, I, I love kids. Mm -hmm. So and I, I used to be one of those kids that, you know, had were hurt and things yeah. like that. So it hurts to right. see other kids hurting. Yeah. And so that's a that's a righteous anger. Yeah. Um, and that's good to have to be directed at something that's an injustice. Um, does that come from you because you feel like you experience a lot of that injustice as well? Yeah. Um, and I also see God's God's heart for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it comes a lot from uh, I would say a lot from my past because I knew where I came from uh -huh. and I would have loved uh, to had somebody to come beside me as a little kid and just say, hey, yeah man, I'm here for you, you know, right. even though that's a stranger, that would have been, you know, uh, I was raised by a single mom for years and years. I didn't, I didn't have another man in my life that, you know, uh, m maybe I did here and there and I just never sh showed interest. Mm. Um, but, uh, I wish I had had that guy that, you know, no matter what the age was, it right. says, Hey, you know, it, a consistent, it, healthy yeah, male presence. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that is so much. That's why I joined Regen. It's like God was saying, you know, I need male relationship. We all need male relate, and women need women relationship. Uh, we need those relationships. That's how we grow in our relationship with Christ. Yeah. That's how um, we grow spiritually. You know, um, so hmm. good stuff. Anything more you want to say about Regen? It's amazing you should come, uh, no matter if you have issues or not. It is a <laughs> discipleship program. It is a discipleship it's program. It's not a uh, recovery program. If you don't have, like, those big, huge recovery uh, issues that are labeled out there, uh, come anyway, because um, you'll be surprised. Well, uh, we're recovering from sin. Yeah. Everyone and, uh, is. If you, don't give, if you don't struggle with sin, give me your, uh, give me your uh, let me know who Jesus is. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not struggling from sin. Uh, okay, well, then you yeah. probably don't need to be there. You probably really need to be a region. <laughs> you, you probably actually that. do, as it turns out. <laughs> um, all right, we've got a number of other questions. Uh, let's switch gears here a little bit. Which do you prefer, Lord of the Rings or Star Wars? Oh, that is so hard. Um, I'm going to say Lord of the Rings. Hmm. Uh, but they are about, I like Star Wars 4, 5, and 6. And the others, you know, are okay. Um, I believe you. <laughs> Are four, five, and six the ones I would know? Yes, oh, okay, yes, yes. Right. Uh, okay. With Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Yes, gotcha. and, you know, um, <laughs> the, the others aren't aren't as good, but um, okay. So, uh, how would you rate your level of fandom with uh, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars? Aficionado, geek level, what? Um, I would say geek level. I know, I don't get mad. Like I will, okay. Like with Star Wars, okay. People are going to hate me, but I, one of my favorite characters, Jar Jar Binks. No. Ah, uh, yes. And this... Bob's, Bob's probably going to hate me for that. It's, a, it's okay. It's... I, I like the humor. It was the humor. But uh, as I've gotten older, it's like, That oh. just speaks to something wrong with you. <laughs> that, that should come up in a regen right there. Yeah, yeah. It's like Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, is... that should come up right regen. there. Regen. <laughs> for sure. Um, okay. What do you like about Lord of the Rings and why are you uh, such a fan of it? L-O-T-R. Uh... For a long time, I did not know that Lord of the Rings was like a Christian fantasy novel. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that for such a long time until I started reading about it, J.R. Altook and, yeah. and uh, C.S. Lewis were actually great friends. Yes. And um, anyway, uh, so uh, something about Lord of the Rings, you know, d dwarves, uh, strong, hardy people with beards, live in mountains. You know. <laughs> What's not to like about that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, usually wear their heart on their sleeves and pretty rough and grumble people, uh, but uh, in, in that universe anyway. And uh, just that, uh, you know, always, if it's anything magical based, it's it's really, you know, just to see that, you know, almost like Harry Potter, you know, like just that magical sense of, wow, that's really, you know, really cool. With Lord of the Rings, it was, uh, you know, just actually attaching you know, and seeing, you know, how he was using that as an allegory for, you know, Christ, you know, the, like the ring of power, mm -hmm. sin, you know, sin and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I don't know. There's uh, a little more of uh, good and evil against one another in, in Lord of the Rings, I think. Yeah. 
than most other of those kinds of fantasy uh, mythic uh, traditions that we have today. Yeah. Yeah. I've always appreciated that about Lord of the Rings. Um, if you are a parent, and Chronicles and of Narnia too. Yeah, Chronicles yeah. of Narnia for sure. Amazing. Uh, if you are a yeah. parent, you should read uh, Tolkien and Lewis to your kids. Just not the Cimmerillion. That would be really boring. But not the Cimmerillion, because that would be boring. <laughs> I kind of know what you mean. He, but well, not really. uh, well, the Cimmerillion is like <laughs> is like reading like Exodus, and uh, and the, uh, you know it's just a bunch of names, and uh, you go on to histories of peoples and you, things you're like that. Of numbers, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. Well, it, it's in the or, early or books of the Bible. Leviticus is partly yeah. like that, but yeah. yeah. Um, Anyway, so lists of names, and he begot that. He and it's not; it's less adventurous and more of here's how we got to where we are in the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, so if you've got an older kid, that might be interesting. <laughs> I think we may be doing Exodus next in our uh, oh, okay. Sunday morning worship times. Um, <clears throat> how did you and Karen meet? E Harmony. E Harmony. E Harmony. Dot com. Cool. Uh, so I, I had been single for a really long time. Uh, I uh, was in a previous relationship, took a break for two years uh, just to focus on God. And um, I was like, well, I'll try this again. I wasn't having any luck with just randomly meeting some girl in the, in the middle of nowhere. So I was like, let's try websites. And I've tried them all. And I was like, well, let's try eHarmony. And so I signed up for a full year. There, there like are a lot of people who have found their spouse on eHarmony and some others, yeah. a few others like that, yeah. Um, it's not I crazy signed, talk. Yeah, I signed up for a full year, and I was like, I'm probably not going to find anybody within a year, but, you know, I'll sign up for a full year. And like two months into being on eHarmony, I found Karen. And so here you are. Here you are. And you have a family. Yep, seven years of marriage. I just had our wedding anniversary in May. So. Nice. Very good. Um, these are questions that came from our staff Okay. Um, in particular. And I say that because this one is, if you were a potato, how would you be cooked? And who asked that question? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know who asked that one? Yeah, I know. The potato who, question. Who on our paid staff do you think would ask, if you were a potato, how would you be cooked? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like potato. I feel like I'm being roasted. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's uh, not me. No, uh, maybe Tyson Hodge? It's definitely Tyson. Oh, okay. It's definitely Tyson. Uh, anyway, if I were a potato, uh, probably... Double, uh, double baked. Double uh, baked, yeah. Because because that those are really yummy. They are. I don't know. I do like that. <laughs> I like I like a crusty, with a thick leathery outside yeah. for my baked potatoes. Yeah. Twice baked are good. Oh yeah. Uh, and and when they when they put the inside and make it mashed potatoes and then put it back in the skin. Oh yeah. Yeah, Hasselback potatoes are really good too. Hasselback. Yes. Have you ever heard of is that? Is that what that's called? Yeah. No, no. Hasselback is where you slice it really thin and then you put like cheese and chives on top. No. Oh. No. 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 <laughs> um, favorite music artist? Uh, Casting Grounds. I would have to say. Uh, you... If not that, it's uh, Stephen Curtis Chavin. Oh, a little old school SCC. Yeah. If you could change your name to anything, other than Daniel, what would it be? Uh. Something some people might know is my first name is not Daniel. Ah. Uh, my first name is James. Uh, but uh, when I first was, uh, we were looking at getting um, adopted for me, I mm -hmm. was actually thinking about changing my name to Daniel Allen Matheny because hmm. uh, Tim Allen was like my favorite actor of all time. <laughs> to, uh, home improvement, you know, pretty much a guy like me. Uh, well, I don't know anything about tools, but it didn't look like he did either. And he, he just made things explode and things usually go wrong when that I'm concerned. That looked like fun, yes. Yeah. To and be the so, uh, guy. Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, so that's what I would want to change. And uh, another part of me also wanted to do uh, uh, maybe Clark, because uh, I'm a huge Superman fan. Uh and so uh, I used to have a, a fake pair of glasses that I used to wear all the time as a kid with the lenses popped out and everything. You should not have shared that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we like to end coffee convos with what's God teaching you? And you shared a little bit about this yeah. earlier in Regen, uh, but what's God teaching you lately? And what are you excited or encouraged about? Uh, what God is teaching me lately is um, how to be a better father and a mm. better 
husband. How so? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, like when I first started, I was still in that lazy, like when I came home from a hard day of work, uh-huh. I would go to my relaxing modes, like playing video games for an hour or something like that, instead of playing time with my kid, uh, playing you would disengage. Kids. I would disengage instead, instead of, of engage. engage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, l- learning how to, you know, instead of me saying I need rest, instead of saying, well, my my wife also needs rest, and how can I serve her, even though I just got home from work? Right. Yeah. Um, the the, the pa- like I talked earlier, the patience thing has been a big has been a big thing for me. Um, Meaning, being patient during the hard stuff, as opposed to patient is not passivity right, yeah right. yeah uh, not being passive in those things but gotcha. l- truly working through those things and saying hey yes i'm i'm struggling and reaching out to people uh, and things like that right uh so uh those have been um and what was the second question what are you excited or encouraged about we'll get there in a second okay let's let's, let's stick with the uh so did you used to feel like engaging and not being passive and continuing to serve and moving forward was something that you couldn't do or weren't allowed to do i couldn't do because i wasn't smart enough i didn't think that i had the okay i I, every time something came at me i would just run away because i knew uh the first seven years uh, like that's the forming years of the brain you know i've i've learned that over the years Yeah, yeah and uh i no matter it it no matter over the years, no matter who shared what with me, uh-huh. no matter how much encouragement you threw my way, right. I couldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. I refused to believe it because something in my head kept telling me I wasn't enough and there was mm-hmm. no way that I could uh, recover from those things right. and there was no way I could because uh, I just I wasn't worthy enough. Right. And uh, it wasn't until Regen and, um, and actually a big proprietor of me uh, other than God's work in my heart, but um, the first time I felt God's acceptance was during a team bash when you handed us, you mm. know, football for you know maximum uh, six, yeah, and uh, being vulnerable and everything, and uh, you know that was the first time I could actually feel uh, God saying, uh, you know, you are worthy. I'm calling you worthy, not because of you know anything you have or haven't done, just because I've called you worthy. You are that. Right. You know, I've made you. That. Yes, I've I've called you to do. Right. And uh, now that I'm getting, and I, even though I've said I've been a Christian for years, it's only been here in the last few years I've actually started to dive into God's word, and you start seeing those, you know, like, like, it, uh, called instances. Like it's yes. it, it, it. So far in the church, you know, I grew up believing it's like if uh, anybody can be a Christian. I was like. What I'm starting to learn and starting to understand is, uh, no, not everybody can be. God only calls a certain few, and I'm lucky and blessed enough to be one of those few. To be called is the the gift of grace. Yes. And and to hear that call, the good news registers in my heart. That's not to say God doesn't want everyone to be saved. Yes, he does want that. Sure. God desires all. It says it. Yeah. But uh, he also knows who will accept his call, right. and uh, and he has he has like that one sermon you you had shared, you know, about pulling the fish from the net. You know, I've been that fish that's swimming the other way, uh, kicking, screaming, and everything else. And he's and, dragging. Yeah, hell yeah, he's dragging. And th- so that has kind of helped me, you know, s- seeing how much I have, you know, just tried to resist that call for my own selfish needs. Yeah, and desire. seeing how much we actually have in Christ. Uh, and the righteousness of Christ for us, and yes. what He's purchased for us, and, and He's already done all the work. Like yes, it's already done. Yes, the worthiness is in Him and what He's done. Yeah, um, and so not in me or how I failed or yeah, um, that's good, that's good because I do think a lot of people struggle with, and, and you alluded to it at the beginning. I don't know enough. I'm not smart enough. Uh, I don't have no experience in this. I'm not good yeah. enough. I'm not holy enough I'm I, not. I don't have a theology degree <laughs> right yeah as yeah. if as if those kinds of things should keep someone from yeah. <laughs> from serving from being an important part of the kingdom yeah. uh, from being a disciple maker um, God has never used a perfect person other than Christ not yeah. once yeah not once uh, um, I know it's hard to believe but there are many things wrong with me 
<laughs> if you look at all the 12 disciples, you you know, you see they're like, yeah, there are some huge issues there. Uh, you think? <laughs> the Apostle Paul killed somebody. Yeah. Uh, actually, probably somebody's. Yeah, a lot um, of people. Yeah. And, uh, and so there are things in everyone's life that could keep us from moving forward. Yeah. And God wants you to move forward. He... Uh, you know, even if you're you're struggling, serve. Uh, yes. That's how God get, is going to connect with you. That's how He's connected with me. That's good. Um, that's good. I like it because that's super true. So, what are you excited or encouraged about? I'm excited and encouraged about South Green. There you are. <laughs> yes, you should. Be. Uh, I uh, I'm glad that it's right down the road. It's someplace I'm familiar. I'm sure. uh, uh, super excited to see uh, Bob step up into that position yeah. and uh, be able to help out there, uh, see the opportunities. And uh, I know several, several people I've talked with in the community who are excited about, who don't even go to FCC, about having a church mm-hmm. on you know that particular side, different from the other churches that have been there since 1919. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, and... Uh, so I'm I'm excited about that, um, and uh, just uh, learning how to grow and serve here and different things like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm super excited about South Green and uh, learning uh, more next steps and I'm I help out in next steps. What's a lot. What's that? What is that? That is how we get you connected to the body of Christ. Yes. Next steps isn't just like. Uh, you know, a, a direction to membership. It's, you know, we get you connected to a life group. We get you connected to a, a Next Steps helper, mm-hmm. um, which helps you through the process of writing down, this is my story in Christ. Mm-hmm. And the next step is, okay, let's get you uh, membership. And then it's like, oh, hey, let's get you connected to maybe some life group ideas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, get, it gets you also connected to other people in the com- If you... Feel like you're not being connected well, then you're not connecting well with others. And it's available. Yeah, it's there. It's there. And we have people there to help you. And, and we, donuts. We call them helpers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next um, steps, helpers. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, uh, like uh, uh, life does get busy sometimes, and sure. helpers can uh, cannot reach out as much as they uh, they should. I've made that mistake, you know. But and most all of the helpers all, are doing a great job. Yeah. Reaching out though. Yeah. So uh, there's been a few times like, gosh, I haven't meshed them in like a month. And I'm like, okay, let me see how they're doing. And yeah. so uh, anyway. Good stuff. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for Coffee Convos. Oh, thanks for having me. It's good to hear about the uh, importance of serving, being critical for you as well as Regen and jumping in to be a Next Steps helper. Yep. Good stuff. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, D D D and D. Sorry. <laughs> We're not going <laughs> to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't want to clash over that one. Thank you.